Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of Gelato's webinar. We are right now in the middle of what is probably the busiest, but potentially also the most profitable season for e-commerce. And like most merchants across the globe, you are probably also racing up right now to launch new marketing campaigns, update your product catalog, and set yourself up for gifting season success. Now, to help with that, um, I have here uh, Steve McCormick, who has launched the e-commerce store Vinta Prince, a global store with high quality products that feature stunning worldwide destination that are sure to spark great memories and also hometown pride. Now, Steve launched uh, Vinta Prince in 2020, and you have successfully uh, scaled your company, Steve, through three, this will be a third peak season, I guess. I mean, we'd love to hear um, more about what has helped you thrive and overcome the pressure that this season can also bring to sellers. So just wanted to wish you a warm welcome and thank you for taking the time to join us today. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Now, um, let's just dive right in there. Um, and, uh, and also, I, I know you're busy, but in these times, um, what is it that you both dread and love the most about being in peak season as a seller? Um, so honestly, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy kind of the, the chaos of it, of that there's, there's every day, there's constantly more and more orders coming in. Um, it just gives me this, this kind of great feeling of, of being busy, of being active, uh, of doing things. And I was really trying to think hard about what I dread, and I don't think that I really dread anything. It's a really um, great time of the year. It can be, yeah. if you're well prepared, probably that is, yeah. right? Just to go back a little bit, because um, I know Vinta Prince for you was uh, not just any side hustle. Uh, it was a passion project. Uh, That's can right. you tell me um, how, how did you start Vinta Prince and how has that passion helped fuel your growth? Uh, so I studied, you know, I studied graphic design when I went to, to university. And so then I moved to Spain after university. And while I was living in Spain for a few years, I was traveling a lot. Uh, and so throughout my travels, I wanted to start making, um, travel posters to kind of remember my different trips, different locations that I visited. And at first that I just wanted to start making them for myself. Um, and so I did that for a few years. Then I eventually moved to Poland. Uh, and I was here teaching English. And while I was there uh, during the pandemic, uh, teaching English online became unbearable. So I had to find something else uh, to do. And so I returned to these uh, travel posters and I just started making more and more of them. Uh, then I thought, you know, other people might like these too. And so I started looking into ways that I could scale and I could start selling them. And uh, eventually I found print on demand. Building a business can be extremely hard. Yeah. How, what was that passion meant to you during those times? And I guess peak is also a good example of that. Yeah. I think that passion was very important. Um, like you said, it can be very challenging and difficult to, to start a business. And so having the passion for the, to make the travel posters, um, has just helped me keep going when things are difficult because I love it. I love making them. I love seeing them finished. Um, it's really a joy for me so that it really helps just Keep going through those difficult times. This is your third peak season, and I'm sure uh, it hasn't been, you make it sound very easy, but I'm sure it hasn't been uh, just a walk in the park. What are some learnings that you've done over the years and that has helped you plan better? Uh, what have you done to prepare better this year than, for example, the first year you started? I would say that, that being um, organized, is, uh, has been the biggest thing that I've learned is just being organized of, of having a plan of what you want to do, what products you want to launch, um, and keeping, you know, moving forward with your, your plan and, and, and your organization. How do you come up with, you mentioned product launches. Um, how do you come up with what, what products should you launch for, for peak? Uh, and how do you learn what your customers are looking for? Um, so in the very beginning, it was just creating new designs, new cities, you know, major cities around the country, around the world, uh, that were in my opinion, or, or, or high travel destinations, things like that. Uh, those were kind of my beginning. Then once I got through a lot of those, um, it was kind of finding newer, maybe smaller cities that aren't so popular of tourist destinations, but, um, 
people find a lot of pride from from living there, from going to school there, uh, that they have family there. And so a lot of times people will contact me and they say, you know, I love your Chicago poster. I love your New York poster. But can we have, you know, Omaha, Nebraska or something? These, these really small uh, cities. And so I, I make those. I put them on the store and they actually end up selling quite well. Um, and so that helps continue the growth as well. And I mean, that must be one of the, the great assets of, of production or print on demand as well, is that you can test new designs yeah. without it being a huge risk. Uh, if, if they sell, they sell and yeah. uh, be able to launch your products. That sounds great. Um, but I know you also get help now from uh, from some digital tools that can make also that design process, the scaling of a little bit easier. What are some of your favorite tools and and uh, that you can share with uh, with others. Uh, so of course, things like you know all the Adobe products like Photoshop and Illustrator are are my bread and butter. They're always open on my computer. Uh, I'm using those constantly. Um, and then of course now with AI, uh, things like ChatGPT, just to come up with ideas to kind of almost like have someone to talk to. I mean, like I said before, that I'm the only one doing all of this. Uh, so it is nice to have somebody to to bounce ideas off of or to kind of flush out an idea and get get more um, more to it. I mean, Peak is also a subject to challenges. There are, there are higher volumes of orders, a uh, 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 risk of delays. I mean, of course, uh, that we have this big network of producers and, and the local production can help with that. How do you prepare your customers? How do you set the right expectations? And how often do you communicate with them ahead of Peak? Yeah, for, for this time especially, it's communication is very important. Um, so from the very beginning of in the in the listings, in the product descriptions, in the shipping estimates, um, kind of padding those, making those a little bit bigger, just so that from the from the get go when they make the order, they're not expecting it to be in a couple of days. They're expecting it maybe in a week, week and a half. And so it's it's better to you know, under promise and over deliver. So maybe they're expecting it in two weeks, but it comes in one week. Uh, and so kind of setting those expectations before the order. And then as things happen uh, after they place the order, so sometimes, you know, packages get lost, sometimes they get damaged, uh, or there's things that are out of stock, just communicating that. As soon as you find out about it, passing it on to the customer, um, keeping that communication and and uh, expectations up. And how do you then uh, communicate to them? And do you also do any sort of uh, email marketing? Um, well, what do you have in place for that? And what do you recommend for others to explore? Yeah, in terms of communication, it's sent, sending a quick email of an update of, uh, hey, you know, the frame you order is out of stock. Can we, you know, do you want to wait? Do you want to change it? Do you want to change the color, the size? Uh, things like that. And then in terms of email marketing, it's just staying in front of the customer. So if, even if it's an, you know, an email once a month or twice a month, just kind of being, keeping your previous customers, if you have an email list, keeping them, keeping your, your brand kind of top of mind uh, so that they think of you when they have a need for themselves or for a gift, uh, then, then you're, you're the brand that they think of. Yeah. I like that being one step ahead too, right? Before they even can think of what they they need you're right in front of them with communication about your new products or something they purchased the last time that's uh that's a good idea um i think it's quite impressive i mean you're you're based in uh located in poland still the u.s is your biggest market how did that come into play um I I don't know that I specifically targeted. I just felt more um, comfortable there, just because being an American, you know, I may not live there, but it's still uh, the the way that I think, and and uh, I'm still consuming, you know, American news and sports and things. Um, so it it's just maybe you know having that more uh, a relation with it or a connection with the, the country that allowed that to happen. I mean, expanding internationally is that a a strategic tool for growth? For you as well and, and being able to launch in new markets and what would be your recommendation to other sellers that are maybe thinking of of uh, growing their store uh globally yeah so that's a bit of a challenge it's been a challenge for me to to increase the sales uh outside the states and i think some of the, the things that are helping is for example offering 
um, your your sizing in more international friendly sizes and kind of international paper sizes, um, as well as offering good shipping rates to to those uh, your you know uh, international uh, destinations. Sounds like a good idea. And how do you um, uh, how has Gelato been able to help you with that? And how would you like us to help you? in the future to continue on that path? Uh, so in that instance, Gelato has been fantastic. I've just, uh, especially, you know, selling on places like Etsy where there's a marketplace. And so you can't really explain that it's going to come from many different places. It looks like it's only coming from one. And so a lot of times customers that, that might order from me in the UK, they're expecting that it came all the way from California. And so they're already expecting a long shipping time. But when it arrives in a week, or you know less than that, then they're very shocked, and uh, so that's where Gelato comes in with their really quick shipping um, and close by production. We're just heading, as as we've talked about, into probably the the busiest time. We have uh, uh, Halloween coming up, like Friday, and then all of a sudden uh, the holidays are here. But if you were to try to summarize three of your top tips, uh, what should sellers be focusing on now to get ready for peak? Yeah. So I think my three top tips would be to communicate early and communicate often. Uh, like we were touching on about just setting those expectations to avoid, uh, you know, angry or upset customers that they, they expect, you know, that it will come in a certain amount of time and then it does. Uh, and so, like I said, yeah, so to uh, under promise and over deliver on that one. The next is to be organized and be prepared. Uh, so organize kind of the plan that you want to have, whether it be your marketing, whether it be the designs that you want to launch, um, and, and get those out in a timely manner so that they have time to, to get into your market and, um, you know, get some sales. Uh, and then lastly, I would say to know your customer is that knowing your, your niche, your target market just kind of makes your store, your brand more cohesive, uh, and just has a better feel overall for the customer than being this kind of random print on demand store that has, you know, a little bit for everybody, but doesn't have anybody for, doesn't have anything for anybody specific. Seems like that ties in with your passion uh, as well. And that you dare to be a, a unique and you dare to be different. Is that something you've had in mind uh, and a vision for your store the whole way? Or has this also been part of the learning process for you? Um, it's been a bit of, a bit of both actually. It's a bit of a learning process of just kind of knowing that that is something that's important uh, and that it does help build a better, stronger brand. Uh, but at the same time, I make the products that I like. You know, I make the things that I would want to put on my wall. I have my my own posters uh, kind of throughout my house. Um, and so it's it's creating things that, that resonate with me because I feel like I'm part of my own target uh, audience. Sounds good. And, and also... Um... Your, your tip about, I mean, it makes sense to, to get to know your customer, but, but how do you get to know your customers and do you meet with them? How do you engage with them? How do you uh, understand their habits and preferences? Um, so I, you know, of course, reading all of your, your reviews, any communication that you have with, with customers uh, can give you an insight of who they are, why they bought your product, what use they had for it, if it was for them, for a gift. And also just asking them sometimes, um, you know, if you have some kind of a, a contact with the customer, ask them like, hey, how did you find me? How did you choose me? What about, you know, my designs or my artwork resonated with you? And they'll give you a great feedback. Uh, and again, if, if they li liked you and they chose you and now you're asking them questions, they feel even stronger connection. They may even come back, you know, a second or third time. Exactly. I mean. And, and Steve, you are um, uh, a customer of Gelato uh, as well. So so I'd like to wrap up by also asking you, how can we best support you during this upcoming peak season? Uh, honestly, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, I, I've been with Gelato for about three years now, two and a half, three years. And every season gets just a little bit better and a little bit better of the, you know, there's less, you know, things out of stock. The shipping times are usually very good. And things like this, of this outreach to to your customers uh, and kind of including us in, in how the business is growing, how it's developing. Um, it just, it's really, it's really very nice. Thank you, Steve. And likewise, this is how we learn as well and get better. I hope for every uh, peak season, it's going to be a wonderful ride. And we're so happy that you're joining us 
uh, on it and for joining us today. Um, thank you so much again and wish you all the best of luck for the next few months. And to everyone who's been watching, we wish you the best of luck as well. Reach out to us if there's anything we can support with. I'd also like to flag a an offer that we have now, a campaign that's going on until December 5th. You can sell two or more products in one order and we will cover half of all of your shipping costs. So you can go to gelato.com and you can read more about that and take advantage of this offer. You can also check out uh, our blog on gelato.com for more tips and for e-commerce marketing tools, upsell product trends that you can leverage during this year's peak. Wish you all a very successful gifting season. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.